In this video, I'm going to be talking about the different online course platforms and which one is right for you. Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Amy from Rebel Nutrition. I am a multi-million dollar online course creator and I thought in this video it would be really fun to kind of break down some of the most popular online course platforms. So we're gonna be talking about Udemy, Thinkific, Kajabi, and Teachable. I'm gonna be talking about the pros and the cons of each one. So if you are considering creating your own online course, you can choose the best platform for you. Now at this point, I have helped over 2,700 students create and launch their own profitable online courses. So I feel like I have a pretty good pulse on like what works and what doesn't. Now I'm also gonna be totally transparent with you. At the end of this, I'm gonna share with you which platform I use and I really prefer, but I'm gonna try and go through the pros and cons of each one in the most non-biased way as possible. Okay, so first let's talk about Udemy. You guys have probably heard of Udemy, maybe you've even purchased courses on Udemy. And honestly, I think from a customer or student perspective, Udemy is fine, right? Like you can go on there, you can pretty much search for any type of online course you want and probably find one that looks decent for around $10. Now, the quality of the courses is sometimes questionable because you don't know anything about the instructor. There isn't really any marketing strategy associated with any of the courses. It's kind of just like a library where you can go on and search. And now for this reason, I really, I like how I said this was gonna be non-biased, but now I'm totally giving my opinion. I really don't think Udemy is a great option if you are a course creator. So I'm gonna go through some of the reasons why. And the number one reason I don't love Udemy as a course creation platform is because the most that you can really sell an online course for on Udemy is around 10 to $20. So even if you take, you as the course creator take months and months of time and effort and research to create this amazing online course, even if it's you know 40 hours long, Really, there's kind of a cap on what you can price it for on Udemy because everything else on there is so low priced. People are specifically going to Udemy to search for cheap courses. Whereas if you, you know, spent time and effort building up a personal brand and an audience around your specific teaching style, you could sell that exact same course for hundreds, if not thousands of dollars. Now, a benefit of Udemy is that they kind of have built-in traffic for you. They've built this brand. People know they can go to Udemy and search for whatever type of course, whatever topic they are hoping to learn about, right? So that can kind of automatically give you traction, give you traffic to the course that you have created if you decide to you know, post it on Udemy. But the problem with that is that if Udemy drives traffic to your course, you actually only get to keep 37% of the profit. And again, think about it this way. If your course on Udemy is $10 and you only get to keep 37% of the profit, that's less than $5 per sale of your online course, right? Now, if you drive the traffic to your course sale on Udemy, you get a higher percentage. I think it's like 97%, so that's better. But again, if you're using one of the other platforms that I'm gonna talk about in a second, you get to keep almost 100% of the profit. They are taking a very, very minor amount. So for that reason, if you're gonna spend the time and effort creating a course, I mean, you decide what's best for you, but Udemy is not my favorite. Now also you guys, as I'm going through these, if you like really disagree with me, please tell me in the comments, tell me what your experience has been with you know, any of these platforms, if you think I have it wrong, I'm open to hearing, okay? And next let's talk about Kajabi. I would say Kajabi is the number one, I actually don't know for sure, but I think it's maybe the number one platform that people host their courses on. And for a lot of good reasons, there's a lot of benefits about Kajabi. Kajabi can be used for courses, obviously. It can also be used for memberships. It can also be used for a variety of other digital downloads. The platform provides a lot of different templates to start with. So if you're you know, not a coder and you want to design a beautiful looking course, they give you a lot of options to make that really doable and easy and beautiful. There's a lot of drag and drop features. So if you're not super tech savvy, it is a good option for you. One of the biggest pros about Kajabi, I think, is that it comes with its own built-in email marketing software. So instead of like other platforms where you have to use an entirely separate software like ConvertKit or something, something and integrate it with that course platform, Kajabi has its own native email marketing platform. So you can kind of do everything in one, which I think is super easy, super great to have everything in one place. Kajabi also lets you build out funnels 
write in Kajabi again without having to use a third party software like EverWebinar, Webinar Jam, Lead Pages, something like that. Again, you can do it all in one place, which is super seamless and easy to use. The last thing about Kajabi that I would say is a definite pro is it kind of provides a sense of community for its students. So if you are gonna do a course that has maybe a community aspect or a membership, again, it's all built in. You don't necessarily need to be like sending people to an outside Facebook group or something like that. Now let's go through the cons of Kajabi because I pretty much just gave it a very glowing review, but I have to be fully honest with you guys. I personally have never used Kajabi myself because I have been in other people's courses on Kajabi as a student. And right when I was first getting into online courses, as I was deciding which platform I wanted to use, I was like, I don't want to use Kajabi because as a student, I think they're really difficult to navigate. Like, I don't like the way that this setup looks. I can never remember what spot I was in if I, you know, had to leave my lesson and then come back later. Um, it just, it wasn't very intuitive. I didn't really like it. So even though the courses that I were in, the content was great, I just didn't like the flow as a student. And for that reason, <laughs> I didn't end up using Kajabi. So I would say that's number one con is that the interface the simplicity as a user is just not there, at least in my opinion. And as far as my research on what some of the other cons of Kajabi are, it's that their email marketing, even though it's built in, it doesn't have a lot of the same robust email marketing features as a third party email marketing software would have. So like I said before, ConvertKit, you can really customize the email, add tags, like create a funnel, all of that good stuff. Every single thing you would wanna do in an email marketing platform you can do if you're integrating with that third-party software, but with the built-in Kajabi email marketing, you don't really have those, at least according to my research. Kajabi is also a higher price point. Now, I don't necessarily feel like that's a con if you're getting all the softwares you need in one place, but depending on what your budget is when you're starting out, you might wanna you know, start with some free softwares first to try them out to make sure you like them. So again, higher price point, harder to navigate as a student, which I mentioned, and also apparently the page builder, so the place where you're building out your course is not as intuitive for the course creator as some other platform. So that makes sense to me as a student, doesn't look very intuitive. And apparently as the course creator, it's not very intuitive either. Definitely let me know in the comments, do we have any Kajabi users out there? And do you like it? Do you wish you had started with something else? Let me know your feedback. Okay, now let's talk about Thinkific. Now, again, I have to be fully transparent. I have never been a student on a Thinkific course and I have never created a Thinkific course. That's kind of hard to say, Thinkific. One of those words that like you say over and over again and it starts to sound really strange. Anyways, let's go through the pros and cons. So pros are apparently it's great for non-techie people. It's really easy to use. They have some plans with no transaction fees, which is amazing. I mean, I don't know if I've ever heard of any other platform that has no transaction fees whatsoever. I'm assuming those plans are a higher price point to start with, but again, that's a great option if you're doing like a large volume of sales. Thinkific's page builder is super intuitive. You can drag and drop, easy to move around for the non-techie person, we love that. Now, as far as email marketing goes with Thinkific, it easily integrates with a variety of different email marketing softwares. So MailChimp, Constant Contact, ActiveCampaign, ConvertKit, all of those different things integrate well with Thinkific, which is amazing. It's also one of the only platforms to offer a free plan, which is great. I think if you're getting started and you want to like dabble with course creation a bit before you launch your course, it's great to start with a platform that has a free option, especially so you're not you know, paying too much before you start making money. Another huge pro of Thinkific is that their customer service is one of the best of all the course platforms. Apparently they have like the lowest incidences of downtime of any course provider, which is amazing. So occasionally, I mean, this has only happened to me a number of times in the past five years, but there will be like the site goes down or something and you have to wait a couple minutes and potentially you could be losing sales during those times. So it's like really important that that doesn't happen. But Thinkific apparently has the lowest percentage of downtime and downtime incidences of any other course platform. Thinkific also lets you do a variety of different price points at checkout. I think this is pretty common among any course platform, but you can do you know a one-time purchase, a payment plan, things like that, which is really great for giving customers different options. Okay, now let's get into the cons of Thinkific. Number one, it could be considered a con that Thinkific does not have its own 
email marketing platform built in. But I kind of talked about this before. I think there are kind of pros and cons to that. Yeah, it might be easier, but you probably don't have as many functions if your email marketing is built in. So I actually don't mind having to integrate a third party email marketing software with my online course, but that's just me personally. Thinkific also does not have as many robust marketing features after your course is done. So other course platforms, especially the one that I'm about to talk about in just a minute, have ways to kind of boost your sales and marketing after your course is done. So even things like A-B split testing, different page designs, testing conversions and optimizations, stuff like that. That actually is really important once you get to a certain level in your course creation. So I love the ability to at least have that functionality. And the last con with Thinkific is that it doesn't have a marketplace like Udemy does. Now, Again, I don't necessarily think that's too much of a con because I think the way to be the most profitable as a course creator is to build your own brand and send the traffic that you're building to your course because again, you're gonna keep such a higher percentage of the revenue that way rather than like putting your course on a directory site where people can just search because no matter which way you slice it, if you're doing it that way, you're going to be splitting profits with who, whoever is hosting that directory. Okay, last but not least, <laughs> you guys might've guessed what my absolute favorite course platform is and that is Teachable. So Teachable is the second biggest e-learning platform in the world. I should have done my research and figured out what number one was, <laughs> but it doesn't matter. I love Teachable. Um, and again, I'm gonna go through the pros and cons. I'm going to obviously give you my opinion, even though I said I wasn't gonna do that at the beginning, but I'm still going to list out what some of the cons that I think there are with Teachable. Um, and why I've chosen to go with it. Again, I want everybody to make their own decision based on what's right for them. Don't take my word as gospel, do your own research, but these are just the things that I've found to be really great about Teachable and the not so great things over the years. So number one benefit of using Teachable is that you can actually use a free plan until your course is ready to sell, which I think is amazing. That's exactly what I did back when I was starting my business. I had literally no budget <laughs> to outsource anything. So it took me a couple of months to get my course done. And during that time, I wasn't having to pay for a plan on Teachable. So it was great. Like as soon as I was ready to launch, obviously I upgraded my plan to their, I think their basic plan was like $29 a month. I think it might still be about $29 month, which is great, but I wasn't having to pay that until I actually started making money, which I thought was Okay, second pro of Teachable is that their website is meant to be omni-channel and really highly efficiently omni-channel. And what I mean by that is if you go to my Teachable site on your desktop, it's gonna look great. If you look at it on your mobile phone, it's gonna look great. If you look at it on a laptop, gonna look great. iPad, gonna look great. No matter what you look at, it kind of adjusts automatically <laughs> to look aesthetic. And I think the goal is there to not lose people because sometimes if, you know, if your website doesn't automatically become mobile user friendly, which most people are using their phone to look at anything, let's be honest, like you could lose customers if they all of a sudden can't find the enroll now button, things like that. Okay, another thing I love about Teachable is that you can add user roles inside of your account. So this might not be super relevant when you're first starting your business, but like for me now, I have a team of people that help me with different things. And I want to be able to give members of my team access to my Teachable account without giving them full access to like the payment information and things like that. So you can add custom user roles inside of Teachable and basically grant permissions to each of those people to be able to do specific things. Like maybe you want them to be able to check which courses certain students are enrolled in or offer refunds or anything like that. Another pro of Teachable is the drip feature. I think this is so, so cool, especially if you are selling a course on a monthly payment plan and let's say you don't want somebody to get access to all of the content until they've paid for six months or 12 months. You can drip the content, meaning if they've paid for one month, you give them you know, one module of content. Once they pay for the second month, the second module of content drips out to them. So you can kind of like put it on a schedule, which I think is really great. And it also gives people motivation to keep paying if they are on a monthly subscription plan. Now, speaking of payment plans, Teachable offers a variety of different payment plans, which I love. I've really used all of them. So they have a free course option, which means if you wanted to create like a freebie on Teachable, you can do that. They have a one-time payment option, which is pretty self-explanatory. They have a monthly payment option, which is essentially a monthly payment plan. It's not a subscription. So if somebody opts into the monthly plan, they are required to pay you know, the 12 months or whatever, and then the payment stops after that. 
or you can do a subscription plan, which is like, let's say, you know, you're continuously updating content inside of your teachable course. Maybe it's sort of, you're using it like a membership type thing. You can do a subscription, which basically bills them the same amount every single month until you decide to cancel it. So it could be ongoing for even years if you wanted it to. Now, another thing I recently learned about Teachable that I think is really cool too, is you can also offer a free subscription. So like, let's say you have your course on a subscription plan, you could offer people as a freebie, a free seven day trial or something like that. And then after the seven days, it will bill them the normal subscription price. So they can kind of try it out before they pay, which I think is amazing. Okay, next pro of Teachable is that it has its own built-in payment processor, which I really like. I mean, I'm assuming that the other course platforms have this as well, but I know that some people are kind of like, ooh, can I just host my course on my Squarespace site? And I'm like, you know, you could, but then you're gonna also have to integrate different payment processors with Squarespace. And that's honestly just kind of a headache. I love the fact that on Teachable, people can pay with credit card, they can pay with PayPal, and Teachable handles it for you. Teachable also handles sales tax and VAT tax for you. So if you've ever, like, let's say you're a student of mine, if you've gone to purchase the course and you, right before checkout, you maybe see that there's like a little additional cost added to it, that's because Teachable calculates sales tax for you depending on your location. So whether you're in a different, you know, various states in the US have different sales tax and then different countries outside of the US have different percentage of sales tax as well. That's a headache for any business owner to deal with. So it's really nice that Teachable handles it automatically. And now in the off chance that you ever did wanna like give somebody a refund, you can also do it directly from Teachable. It's no hassle, no problem whatsoever. And also one last thing just on the topic of payments I will say is that that their coupon code generator is really, really robust. So, I mean, you can do a lot of different things. You can do a coupon on the first monthly payment. You can do the same amount off of every single recurring monthly payment. You can obviously do a coupon code on a one-time payment. Um, there are just so many options that just make it really easy and honestly intuitive to use. Ooh, another thing that I love, oh my gosh, I love, love, love this about Teachable because it makes my life so easy. So if you wanna have affiliates for your course, so let's say somebody goes through your course and they loved it and they wanna tell other people about it, you can go into their account, add them as an affiliate, put in the percentage commission split you want them to have. So all of my affiliates have a 30% split. So I put in 30% and then you can generate their own affiliate link for them. Give that link to the student and be like, go share this, tell the world about it. And the best part is that whenever somebody purchases using their affiliate link, Teachable will automatically pay them out. So you don't have to do anything, which is just amazing. And affiliate marketing is such a good way to grow your course. Another cool feature that Teachable has is the ability to upsells and order bumps. So what that means is after somebody has purchased your course, on that like you're in or thank you page, you can then offer them a complimentary second course. Like let's say, usually I do this with something that's like lower price than what they already paid for, but that is complimentary and say like, oh, here's a limited time offer to get this other course since you already paid. Because I think there's some statistic that like, if somebody has already spent money with you, they're like, I don't know, this is made up on the spot, but I think they're like 80% more likely to purchase something else from you in the future. So you might as well, if you have another offer that would be complimentary to them, it's a great time to do it. Now that's an upsell. That's again, something after they've purchased. But another thing called an order bump is kind of similar, except when they're on the checkout page, getting ready to click purchase, it gives them the option to add on another complimentary course right before they hit purchase. So you can do one, you can do both, but it's sort of the idea of like, when you go to the grocery store and right when you're in the checkout line, there's like all the little gums and candies and stuff. People usually are like, oh, I'll take that. I'm already spending all this money. Like what's one more thing? So that's a really good, like simple way to increase your course revenue. Teachable also just rolled out a live coaching feature. I have to be honest, I have not personally used this, but if you were going to do a self-paced course that also had the option to add on one-on-one -on -one coaching, that could be a really fun idea. Now, in terms of ease of use as the course creator, this is probably my most favorite thing about Teachable is that it is so easy to put together. It's easy to create your sales page. It's easy to create your course. It's easy to upload the content. It's also as a student, really, really easy to navigate. So this was the main reason that I was drawn to Teachable in the first place is that I had also taken online courses from people who hosted their courses in Teachable. And I was like, oh my God, the experience as a student is so easy. Like this is module one, this is lesson one. When I'm done, I hit 
project complete, it goes to the next lesson. If I log out, come back in, I'm gonna be in the same spot. Like it's just so easy both on the student side and on the course creator side. And the very last pro I will say before I get into the cons, because there are a few, is that you can also actually quiz your students. You can give them a certificate of completion. Um, you can you can monitor like how far they've gotten into the course. So if you're concerned with people not finishing the lessons, things like that, it's truly like if you were to go through an online course from a college, like it's kind of the same feel. Okay, now let's get into the cons. Now there aren't very many. I have been a longtime user of Teachable and there are just a couple things that I am not a huge fan of. Number one, their customer support is good, but it's not great. I think they have a chat that you can chat with them, but it's limited hours. Otherwise, if you're outside of those hours, you have to email them. And when that happens, it usually takes about 24 hours to get a response. Now, once you get a response, they're usually extremely helpful. And if you can chat them during those live hours, then that's amazing. You'll get a very quick response that way. But sometimes if you're outside those hours, you need a quick answer, you're gonna have to wait. Now, another con of Teachable, I would say, even though they say that you can use Teachable as a course platform or as a membership site, I have dabbled in both. I really, I actually recently launched a membership and I really wanted to host it on Teachable because I was like, oh, that'd be so easy. But they just don't have the same functionality as a lot of other membership sites like Mighty Networks where you have like a community and you can do all of those things like that a membership would entail. Now you can still host a membership on Teachable. There's a way to do it, but I just don't think it gives you the same community feeling um, and ease of use and like being able to view things on your app in a seamless way as like Mighty Networks, for example. So that would be another con is that there isn't really an aspect of community on Teachable. Now it does allow you, there's a place where you can enable like students to leave comments on certain lectures and things like that, but it's not really the same feeling. Like I don't think it's a great community aspect feel. If that's something that you're wanting, like for me personally, I have a free Facebook group and then I also have now my added membership, which is amazing by the way. <laughs> another con of Teachable is that the basic plan, so the one I was telling you about before that I think is about $29 a month. It's very inexpensive for that plan, but the transaction fees are a lot higher. But the way that I would kind of justify that is if you're starting with the basic plan and you're having tons of sales, you need to just upgrade to the plan that has very small transaction fees. I'm on the highest plan with Teachable. I think it's called the business plan and I believe it's like $2.99 a month, but the transaction fees are really, really small. I think less than 1%. Um, so it's very, very minor. And that way you're able to take home a lot more revenue. And lastly, the only con, again, I don't even know if I'd consider this a con, but it doesn't have its own email marketing platform integrated into Teachable. You have to connect a third party software. So I personally use ConvertKit. I love the way those two softwares work together. I think ConvertKit and Teachable work really well together. All of my automations are set up through there. So for example, if somebody purchases my course, they're automatically getting an email that says, welcome to the course, here's how to enroll. We're so excited to have you. Here's how to add on the membership if you want live coaching, like all of that cool stuff. So while I don't think any course platform is perfect, I think there are a lot of pros and cons to each different one. I personally love Teachable. I have continued to use it for the past five years and I am really happy with it. It does everything that I want. <laughs> um, and I also have a free code for you guys. I'm gonna link it below if you want to do a free month trial of Teachable. I'm gonna link it for you down there so you can test out what the platform is like, how easy it is to use. And of course, if you want to learn actually how to create and launch and sell your own profitable online course, including how to choose a profitable course topic, how to build an audience, how to set up your email marketing, how to launch your course successfully, and then how to sell your course passively so that you can be making passive income for the next six months, 12 months, five years. <laughs> That's literally what I've done for the past five years. And I would be so excited to teach you how to do this. So I'm going to link to not only that free teachable trial, but more importantly, the free masterclass that's going to teach you all about how to create passive income with your own online course. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know your thoughts, which course platform you prefer in the comments, and I'll be back next week with another video. Bye.